he will be buried on Saturday. Let's now cross live to Sipo Sturman, who is a reporter in Pretoria. Sipo, over to you. Well, a very uh, good afternoon to you and our viewers at home. We are at uh, Dr. Zola Square's family house here in Pretoria East, where mourners are continuing to trickle in and to pay their respects uh, to the family. Of course, uh, those news of his passing uh, coming uh, to us uh, last week, uh, Wednesday, that he had passed away at the age of 75 at a Pretoria hospital. But one of uh, the people that knew him very well is his former spokesperson, and that is Umbule Lomusi, who worked with him when uh, he was at Social Development, a minister that he is being... Uh, credited for quite uh, greatly in terms of the work that he did there. Uh, Sir, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, when he was here to see the family, he spoke a great deal about uh, uh, the impressive work that he did there, social development and making sure that uh, the most vulnerable in the country receives uh, those grants on time. And so certainly that was part of uh, you know, his great legacy, uh, turning around that department. And his spokesperson at the time, he was there for about 10 years, uh, is here with me. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking uh, to me. Uh, you've come to pay your respects as well to the family. Just Talk to us about uh, your memory of uh, Dr. Square. Well, let me thank you and thank uh, the viewers uh, for the opportunity. Um, I had a privilege that history gave me to meet Minister Square. Then uh, he was called Zolabona in Lusaka, 1980. I was on my way to the front line to make my humble contribution as a member of Mkondo Sizwe. When I met him, we, we met and I had a privilege of staying with him in a house called Sagt, which where I was on transit. Uh, he came across as a man who was very frank, honest, a man who stood for the truth, a man of integrity, a man of high ethical standards. He had uh, been deployed before in Ethiopia as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a chief representative equal to a, an ambassador then. And he, people who knew him, he opened Radio Freedom there, etc., to broadcast to South Africa to, to tell them about the struggle. Um, he always kept in touch with the people while he was in exile. Uh, he did a lot of international work for the African National Congress. He was also a seasoned cater from Condoleezza. Least did I know that history again will make our lives cross, but that time in a defining way. Uh, in 2000, I came to work with him. He was Minister of Social Development. I can say that was a defining moment in my life. He touched us as a team, as management, he touched us as staff, but even more importantly, he touched profoundly the poorest of the poor. We crisscrossed the country with him, went to the most rural of areas, the Mount Elis of this world. You would never say this is a doctor of international law. All is humble in his greatness. All is being there for the people. He was hope where there was hopelessness. And, and he would insist to speak to our people in their language, not English. He would talk in Zulu where he, came, he could, he would speak in Kosa. Of course, his suit was not the greatest, but he would try and reach out so that even those who can't, who are not educated, can hear his message. And I can tell you now that he took the social uh, department, which was then at that time um, called social welfare. He transformed it from what was social welfare to social development. The word development to him was critical. He felt that we should give social assistance to the poorest of the poor, but we should have development programs that empower them to be able to live for themselves. So he then developed what was called a 10-point plan. That 10-point plan changed the face of social development in the country. It took it from a department that was despised by older people who felt it was not caring into one of the most caring. In fact, we developed a slogan, a communication slogan under his tutelage and, and leadership where we said, building a caring society together. All right, of course, uh, you mentioned all these great achievements, but, uh, you know, he was also quite known that as much as he was a humble man, but he was also quite vocal when he needed to be. Uh, most recently, uh, you know, a, a, as a veteran of the ANC, he spoke out quite a lot. Precisely. Um, if there's anything that minister must add, uh, was to be able to combine party political work with government work. And indeed, in the party, as a member of the National Executive Committee, as a member of uh, uh, um, the Veterans, uh, 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 Veterans League, uh, he, he made sure that the issues of the cadres, those who fought for freedom, are put on the agenda all the time. He made sure that he fights any form of corruption, any form of nepotism, any departure from the policy of the African National Congress. He would question it because he believed that the, the ANC has a constitution, the ANC has a code of conduct, 
and all the people must stick to that. And he, he, he led by example in that direction. And of late, when he was seeing the challenges facing the agency, things like factionalism, etc., he came vocal and said it cannot be in our lifetime, in his lifetime at least, that a great movement of Oliver Tambo, Nelson Mandela, Joe Slovo can be destroyed. And he challenged it personally and also within the collective to say we dare not destroy such a great movement. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, as you've had a very a great man indeed, uh, humble but uh, quite outspoken and cared for the people and credited for transforming uh, social development ministry. Uh, of course, as you mentioned there in your intro, the memorial service will take place uh, on Wednesday tomorrow at uh, Twana Events Centre where the Deputy President uh, David Mabuza will give uh, the key address. And of course, on Saturday uh, at the official funeral, uh, President Sarah Maposa will give the eulogy. It's now back to you in studio.